Hey guys, in one of my other videos I talked a little bit about audio sample rates and how it affects your audio quality in your recordings. Today I want to break down another technical fundamental of audio, and that is bit depth. Getting your head around bit depth can be a little bit challenging at first, but I think it's really important to understand what it can do for your audio. So if you're working with sound in general, whether it's recording or editing or working with a video program of any kind, you've probably seen settings like 16-bit or 24-bit, and most recently 32-bit. But what does that actually mean in terms of your sound, and what should you be working at? The short and practical answer to this is that the industry standard bit depth is 24. So if you're ever in doubt, it's best to just set your recording bit depth to 24 bits and your session bit depth, whether you're in audio or video editing sessions, to 24 bit as well. So in order to understand bit depth, there's one other concept that you need to be familiar with, and that is quantization. Quantizing is basically just a fancy word for rounding numbers. Now remember, computers as a whole, all recording devices, all playback devices, anything that you're actually going to be editing on, they're just really complicated calculators. So when you record a sound, you're capturing both frequency and amplitude, the pitch and the loudness. And your recorder is going to try and measure what it can, but it's always going to be only approximating that recording digitally. It can never be a perfect representation. That process, that approximating that your recorder does, is quantizing. So when you capture a sound at a high bit depth, it's going to be a much more accurate representation of the sound in the real world. But I think the easiest way to see it in action is looking at a computer's representation of a color spectrum. Take this spectrum. This is at 16 bits. You notice that all the colors seamlessly flow together. They seem really fluid, and there are a lot of different colors represented between white and black, between red and green. Everything is nicely even. You can see each one. Now let's compare that with the same exact color spectrum, but measured in 8 bits instead of 16. That looks absolutely horrible. 8 bit doesn't allow for nearly the same level of accuracy as 16 bit when it comes to colors. It's almost like the, the color nuances have been snapped to their nearest, closest prime color. To give you the numbers, 8-bit only allows for 256 possible colors out of the entire spectrum, which is nothing. That's why it looks so terrible. 16-bit, by comparison, gives you 65,536 possible colors, which is going to be way more accurate and look way better. And just for comparison's sake, 24-bit allows 16,777,215 different possible colors all at once. That, of course, is going to look way better than anything else at a lower bit depth, because because it's just going to allow you so many more options and it's going to look more seamless. This is exactly how it works for audio too. When you have a higher bit depth, it allows for much more accurate representation of every individual frequency and every individual amplitude of those frequencies. And at lower bit depths, it really can't compare. That's why you have, you know, 8-bit video game music sounding kind of granular and artifacty the way it does, and standard, you know, modern music sounding much more articulate and much more smooth. So like I said before, the industry standard bit depth for audio is 24 bits. It allows for much more accurate quantizing of all your audio information when you record, and it's going to sound better as a result. Now, there's a lot of talk about 32-bit floating point, and there's not really an easy way or a less complicated way to break that down, so here's what you need to know. 32-bit floating point basically allows for an enormous amount of dynamic range in your audio, so you can capture really quiet sounds and really loud sounds without a problem. The other thing it does is it preserves audio information above the range of clipping on your recorder. So if you happen to run something too hot, you have all of this information still preserved above that clipping point, and you can bring it all back down in whatever editing software you work with. It's kind of like if you overexpose a digital photo so badly that it's just pure white. If you bring your exposure slider in like Lightroom or something all the way back down, and it can preserve all of the perfect details of the photo as though you'd perfectly exposed it instead of just blowing it away, that's exactly what 32-bit floating point does for your sound. So I know this is sort of a complicated subject, and it's certainly not as cool as like recording aircraft or sound designing space battles or anything like that, but it is one of the fundamentals of audio that's really, really important to know, so hopefully this has been helpful. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to hit like, hit subscribe. I'm over on Instagram at AXK, come follow me over there, and as always, thanks for watching.